Now we finally had a chance to play a big team battle in Halo Infinite. There have been major changes to the game mode like how weapons spawn, how vehicles spawn in the game, and a brand new mode as well. And in this video I want to break it all down for you guys to see how it actually plays out. So do you want to know if Halo Infinite's version of BTB is good? Well stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So the BTB flight is currently live right now. I've been live streaming it on my channel, guys. If you want to check it out, live stream link is in the description down below over on Twitch. We do stream every Tuesday and Thursday evening. But in this video, I want to talk about everything BTB related. And essentially provide my first impressions of the mode in Halo Infinite. Because this is the first time we've had BTB at the launch of Halo since Halo 4, way back in 2012. So there's going to be a lot of things that have had changed with the game. A lot of things have been updated with the gameplay as well. And so I wanted to break that all down for you guys. So if you like these discussion kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as it ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, well, make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. So the first thing I want to talk about is the addition up to 24 players. Traditionally, BTB has only been 16, 8 versus 8, but now it's 12 versus 12. And oftentimes with games and modes, that simply just adding more players doesn't exactly work out for the gameplay loop too often. And that was one of my concerns with Halo Infinite. And even though the flight that we've been playing on for has three modes, Slayer, CTF, and Total Control, which we'll be talking about later in this video, and just the one map fragmentation, I can get a general feel of what they're going to be trying to do. And I think that it's going to be pretty great having 24 players in the lobby. The maps are certainly larger, but not like to a huge scale to where it's like, like I'm playing on like a battlefield map or something like that. It's like a slightly larger version of BTB. So it is really kind of living up to the name of a bigger team battle. And at least the way that fragmentation plays out is that most of the battles will be happening in the middle section of the map. The back ends where like where the bases are don't really see a whole lot of action. So really only about like 60% of the map is really being utilized at any moment. But I think it's really just to kind of help provide better spawn locations so you don't spawn in front of enemies, which happens sometimes when playing BTB on some of the more smaller maps in more classic Halo game modes. Though I will say that the addition of the 24 players for the more players on the lobby, you do have to change your gameplay up a little bit though, where I feel like teamwork is much more important this time around. I find myself less lone wolfing and more times kind of making sure I stick with my team. Because if I find myself like down like a hallway where there's nobody around me, most of the times, yes, that's a bad situation to be in classic Halo, but I feel like in Halo Infinite, it's even more important. Now, this could be just because of the type of players you're playing against, or, you know, the people who sign up for a flight compared to just people who just plug in and play. But I feel like with more people on the map, there's more opportunities to get flanked on, so you want to make sure you stick with your team. So lone wolfing is still possible, definitely, if you're like a really good player, but you definitely want to stick with your team, which is kind of how Halo's always been. I think that's just a little bit more importance put on with Halo Infinite's version. Next, I want to talk about the starting weapons for BTB. A lot of people have been advocates online for a battle rifle start rather than just having the assault rifle and pistol starts which you've been playing around with and from my experience i'm finding ar sidekick starts to be the best option honestly because there's first of all there's plenty of ground loot for you guys to pick up weapons pick up vehicles plenty of different options for you to pick up something beyond just the assault rifle and the sidekick every time i'm spawning in i generally have a chance to at least grab a commando or a battle rifle so then i can at least get into the action in an adequate way but yeah there have been times where i'm stuck with just an assault rifle and a sidekick but oftentimes if i just sticking with my team and not really pushing too far forward and sticking to more close range engagements it's really not that bad at all and for the way the battle rifle shoots in Halo Infinite being a hit scan weapon, that I really would not like to see battle rifle starts because then they just have people lasering each other across map the entire time. Think of playing like Bloodline and Halo 2 Anniversary, right? You're, you can't use the middle section of the map because everyone's just lasering each other across the map with hit scan battle rifles. Not the best experience. And I certainly came across that plenty of times where like I was getting like sniped like from a good section across the map from people using battle rifles. And I was just thinking, man, I'm really glad only that guy has the battle rifle. Because if everybody had a battle rifle, we'd just be like peeking corners the entire time, just like trying to like snipe each other with battle rifles, just be you know, peppering each other left and right. It just wouldn't be that great of gameplay. Though I have noticed, at least on the map fragmentation, that they've certainly designed the map in mind with hit scan because the lines of sight, though are some there are some nice long lines of sight for like good sniping spots and stuff like that. But for the most part, 
Battle Rifle is kind of like the extent of the lines of sight. You don't really get anything beyond that on the most part of things. That's why I'm saying like if you have a commando with your sidekick or something like that, you're totally fine when it comes to engaging gunfights or even honestly just walk around with a sidekick AR. I can tell they kept that in consideration, but I pretty much they wanted to make it so that anything you pick up on the map on these weapon racks will be improvements for your gameplay. And the way that fragmentation has made sure that like hit scan doesn't become too overpowered on the map is because they have these long hallways with these long rock sides or these long hexagonal walls or, as well to kind of block up the lines of sight a little bit so then you're just not getting clipped across the map. Because if you added a map like say standoff back into Halo Infinite and everyone started with battle rifles, no one would be able to move around because there's really no like division of the map. Everything's so open that you can just pick people off across the map. I, Though a map like standoff would work well in Halo 3, since the battle rifle has projectile, you actually have to lead your shots, and also there's a little bit of random bullet deviation there as well. Halo Infinite, it's a very snappy battle rifle. That's because they kind of wanted the battle rifle more as a power weapon pickup kind of position rather than a standard starting kind of weapon. And also, like AR sidekick is a very viable starting weapon setup. And since we're on the topic of weapon design and map design, we also have the Loot Cave, which is a brand new feature for Halo Infinite we never had it before. And on Fragmentation, the Loot Cave is a really cool aspect to the game modes where it kind of like helps pick up better weapons where maybe you might not be able to find something at first. But from my experience with the Loot Cave is that yes, you do get a bunch of good stuff right off the bat once you open it up, but it does take a while for it to unlock, which is I think a fair amount of time, but it's the the ratio of time you have to wait to sit by the door and when you actually open up to get it, there's not really that great of stuff in there. Oftentimes you have like some grenades, you might have a power weapon, like a skewer, sniper rifle, occasionally sometimes a rocket launcher and like another weapon and two pieces of equipment. So a good amount of gear within that cave, but nothing really game changing where I'd make me want to go to the cave every single time I have a chance to open that up. Because most of the stuff that you can find in the cave, you can find out in the map as well for, through ordnance drops or from weapon racks and also just spawn points as well. Now the play of the loot cave might change down the road when it comes to Halo Infinite, but I think one thing I think would really help make people incentivize to open up the loot cave a lot more often would be to maybe add those weapon variants that 343 was talking about with Halo Infinite. Because if you don't remember, 343 mentioned within an Ask 343 video that weapon variants are coming back in Halo Infinite. In what capacity, we don't know, but the loot cave would be an excellent location to put your weapon variants and so then you have some extra bonus and a reason why to go to the loot cave rather than just getting more of the same stuff. Get something special within the cave to make you want to sit there, open it up and really kind of get into all the good stuff that's in there. Another thing about the weapon pickups within BTB, it's that you have ordinance drops that just drop in randomly throughout the game. And I mean like actually like randomly, I was keeping a timer of when I would see these drops come in because sometimes the AI would call us like, hey, weapon drops coming in, which would be great. But sometimes I didn't really, he either I didn't hear it or I just didn't call it out. And so there was a lot of times where I was just like, it felt really random whenever ordinance would drop. And oftentimes I would hear like ordinance drop coming. I would kind of sit around my area going like, okay, where is it? And then once I'd wait like 30 seconds and then not see it, I go, okay, whatever, I just move on about my day. If there was some way to maybe have some kind of indication or something like that, or maybe more visually attractive to your eye to where it would drag you to that spot. Cause right now all you've seen is like a little green glowing light. And if you don't notice that, then well, you're not really gonna notice the ordnance drop. And these ordnance drops are rather important. They drop like either like a sniper rifle, they can drop a gravity hammer, rocket launcher even. And so that's where really like you'll be getting your power weapons from. Not really anything like picked up on the map or anything, though there certainly are like key pickups on the map. At least on the map fragmentation, they're along the rock arch at the top of that. That's where one power weapon spawns. Either it'll be a skewer or a sniper rifle that spawns there. So I think it's like a really nice mix between like randomized weapon drops that come in from the sky like in Halo 4, but also more set drops that come in, which is more traditional Halo. And from my experience with the ordnance drops, it's good. I don't think like a lot of people really notice them dropping in. So oftentimes if you keep a keen eye out, you can actually grab these quite often. Next I'm gonna talk about are the vehicles. Because obviously BTB, you can't have it without vehicles. And it seems to be pretty standard. Nothing too crazy really happens along with the vehicles from my experience. You do have these Pelican drops that kind of come in occasionally throughout the match that drop off generally a ghost. And maybe in the later in the part of the matches, you might get a Banshee. I've seen wasps as well, but sometimes you get a tank, but 
For the most part, they'll just be dropping a ghost right in front of your base. For the most part, the enemy team gets that same kind of thing as well. So oftentimes when that vehicle drops, you have to make sure that you're able to take out the enemy's version before you can really kind of start honing on the different uh, little enemy players running around the map. And I actually kind of kept the timer of when these Pelican drops would come in and they seem to be dropping about every like two, three-ish minutes or so. It's not down to an exact science it looks like from what I've been keeping track of, but it's generally about two minutes, two and a half minutes, sometimes like that. Though I'm not quite sure what sets off these pelican drops to come in. If it's something that happens in the game, like X amount of kills that happen, or if it's a certain amount of time, or maybe if like one team is ahead of the other or something like that. Another thing about these pelican drops is that like I rarely saw a tank come by. Uh, one game like a tank dropped like 30 seconds left in the game, like that's cool. Another one was like two minutes left, another one was like five minutes left in the game, so I actually got a chance to play with that one a little bit. Uh, but it seems like most times you'll be dropping a ghost, occasionally you get a wasp or a banshee, and rarely do you see a tank, which I would personally like to see that come around a little bit more, just to kind of help like break up the monotony of the gameplay a little bit, because it does seem very infantry focused right now, and I would like to see a little more play on the vehicles. Another thing about these pelican drops is that I think the effect of them might be more detrimental to vehicle play within Halo Infinite. Let me explain. So when these pelican drops come in, they come in for both teams at the same time. Oftentimes the way people utilize vehicles within Halo, this isn't just a Halo Infinite thing, just Halo in general, is that they'll just drive the vehicle all the way across the map into the enemy spawn and then get blown up right away. This is why when I'm streaming, it's pretty much like golden rule that I never jump into a randoms warhog because that's pretty much what happens every single time. And so a lot of times what happens is that the vehicles will spawn, people will jump into them right away and they'll just zoom across the map right to, into the action, oftentimes clashing into the other vehicle that someone else spawned into. So they get into that 1v1 vehicle battle. What, either one person dies and gets away or they bolt die either way they're both very damaged to where the vehicles are kind of pointless and generally after the first like 30 seconds maybe a minute both vehicles are destroyed and it's back to infantry play again where in classic halo vehicles would just spawn up on the map and if you're aware of the vehicle being on the map you could utilize it and judging on people's various amounts of awareness within the match you can have these different types of vehicles coming in and going throughout the match and it's not really like a wave of vehicles like we experience within current btb now, now, I don't really think this is an issue on 343 side of things. I think it's more just how people use vehicles within BTBs that they just kind of ram it into the enemy spawn and they get blown up right away. And I think that's player behavior that you can't really change. But I think what the classic Halos did to kind of get around that was having these vehicles spawn up at like a three minute timer after being used. And we currently have that right now with like the Mongoose and the Warthog, but it's not very often I'm seeing these Pelican drop vehicles being really utilized very well. Now let's talk about the game modes for Halo Infinite. We have Slayer, CTF, and Total Control. For Slayer, it does feel a bit slower paced when it comes to the game mode, and a little bit more spread out when it comes to engagements, as the other game modes really do help focus the people into specific areas to kind of create a little more chaos. Slayer is a great way to kind of just jump in and get more acclimated with the maps and the spawns and things like that. It's not too fast paced, it's not too slow paced. It feels kind of about right. I would like to see a little bit more chaos, but that's I think what the other modes are for. Because the other mode, like CTF, plays out really well and it's a really interesting change that happens because you have three flag caps as you do for fragmentation but as you cap their enemy flag their flag position changes depending on how many fla flags of theirs that you've capped so the first flag kind of spawns down this open kind of forerunner structure place and if you capture that one the next flag spot that you have to grab it from is from underneath their base and then the third spot is right on top of their base when you capture that one i brought this up in a previous video for my 13 things you might miss about btb which personally, I think is actually a really great way to kind of do capture the flag now in Halo because sometimes I find it often where like, say you're playing on the map Valhalla in Halo 3. It really is a much standoffish kind of game. It really just plays out more like an extended Slayer. I think having these flags in more open positions really kind of helps get the gameplay moving because if you just see the flag just out in the open right there, like the first position is, people are more apt to go for that flag and get it moving. And also it provides the enemy team a little bit of a better way to kind of come back into the match as well as their flag becomes more and more defended as the enemy's team is still out and exposed. So it provides the other team that might be losing a little bit more of an opportunity to come back into the match, which again is a really great feature I like about CTF in Halo Infinite. Next, let's talk about Total Control, the brand new mode that's come for Halo Infinite. So the way that Total Control works is that you have three zones on the map. 
The first team to capture all three zones scores one point. The first team to three points wins the game or at the end of the timer for 15 minutes. And notice that these zone capture positions are in the same position for each set. So you like set one, two, three, and four, and five. Each set has the exact same locations as well. So it's a little bit more predictable when it comes to these zone capture things. So you can kind of go like, okay, we're just about to capture this. We can set up for zone two kind of positioning. And oftentimes with like these zone control maps that have three points, oftentimes you have like a gimme flag as well as kind of referred to where like the C and A flag spawn really close to the enemy spawns. And so then like it's kind of like their gimme flag where they're guaranteed to have that one same thing with like strongholds in halo 5 where everyone's really more fighting over the center zone that doesn't happen within total control all three positions are rather kind of like similar within the map but more towards the middle like yeah one's more closer to the other team's base kind of situation but uh the way that they're situated they're all kind of close to the middle that they don't really feel like a gimme flag they feel more kind of like a circular kind of motion of battle which is great for halo i really like how these zones are spread out enough to where you can't really interact with each other either so that's a really great thing as well so it's not too chaotic when it comes to playing the mode it really does feel like you kind of like segment out the map while you're playing it so you're kind of defending and attacking these specific battles that kind of all happen with any of this map at the same time it's a really a lot of fun and you can of course you can still kind of make your way over to the other zone to help out your team there as well I do find these total control matches that go pretty long. Most of the recordings I had went to the time limit. Of course, this is the first night that we're playing. I think as people get more acclimated to playing the mode, we'll have less time limit games. But me personally, I don't mind because I actually like long games because I'm a Battlefield fan. So this is kind of like Battlefield Halo version. And that's basically my thoughts on B2B. So far, it's playing out really well. Uh, bigger emphasis on making sure that you have to stick with your team. I love the changes to CTF to kind of get the gameplay moving a little bit more. And I do like total control a lot because it really focuses the gameplay, a lot more chaos, a lot more stuff happening. So if you want more high action game mode in B2B, you're gonna wanna play total control. Though I would also really like to see some more gameplay when it comes to vehicles, some more wasps or some more banshees or more tanks kind of coming in a little more regularly because most of the time it's really just like ghosts and warthogs with a occasional mongoose. And I'd like to see some more variations when it comes to the vehicles being dropped within the map to kind of spice things up a little bit more. So if you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out the playlist right here. I link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.